But hold on, what if I told you the story wasn't about Jackie Robinson, but the story of a man who lived in his shadow? This is the story of Kenny Washington, the forgotten pioneer. Southern California, 1939. California was thought to be a sanctuary from the vile hatred and horrors of racism and segregation in the South. There in Los Angeles, some of the greatest athletes in the nation thrived. The most prominent name in this period, and arguably the most prominent figure in sports history, Jackie Robinson attended UCLA in Los Angeles and grew into a dominant four-sport college athlete. But this story isn't about him, as stated before. This is the story of Kenny Washington, the first black player in NFL history. Although sports forgets his name, Kenny Washington was a pioneer in a movement much greater than sports. Act 1, The Beginning Kenny Washington grew up in Lincoln Heights, a mostly Italian suburb of Los Angeles, California. Kenny was brought up by his uncle Rocky and his grandmother. A key fact about Kenny's upbringing, and possibly part of his inspiration to be tough and to keep battling to break barriers, was his uncle. His uncle Roscoe Rocky Washington was in his own right a pioneer, as he was the first black lieutenant in the Los Angeles Police Department. This was monumental, as black people in the 1930s never had the same opportunities, let alone positions as big as this. Kenny began playing sports at a very young age. However, he truly became a standout when he led Lincoln City High School to a city football championship in his junior season. The next season, he really cemented his legacy with the California State Football Championship. Enter UCLA. The Bruins football program was still trying to burst onto the scene as the USC Trojans dominated football. UCLA needed athletes, and the best athletes they could find. Skin color would have to take the back seat. This is where the dynasties of some of the best athletes in the nation careers would take off. Act 2, the team that shaped history. College athletics, like many professions and opportunities in America, was heavily segregated and obviously very discriminatory towards black athletes. In this era, it was very uncommon for a team to have even one or two black players, but even more extraordinary was more than two black players on a roster. So in 1939, UCLA shook the nation when the roster contained four black players. By this season, Kenny Washington was a natural leader, which led to his nickname, The General. Kenny was a strong thrower and a very strong runner as well. Then there was Woody Strode, a fear-imposing left end from Los Angeles, who played with the passion and a fire. Ray Bartlett, also from the LA area, was a backup on the team and was a player very capable of succeeding in D1 athletics. Ray started his athletic career at Pasadena Junior College, where he was teammates with none other than Jackie Robinson. Jackie was already becoming local legend as a multi-sport athlete with tremendous athleticism and talent. And as we all know today, Jackie became a sports legend and icon. The 1939 UCLA Bruins were much more than their 6-0-4 record. Their impact off the field changed sports history forever. Even the four men just being on the field together sparked hope for a nation that even with the awe-striking oppression and prejudice against the black community, that any person, despite race, can thrive at what they love. Kenny's pro career, why he should never be forgotten. Immediately following a 0-0 tie to cut short the Bruins 1939 season, California media started the call for Kenny Washington to be named a first team All-American. However, when the first team came out, there was outrage across the West as Michigan running back Tom Harmon had been selected over Washington. Kenny's teammate at UCLA, Woody Strode, said, quote, Kenny didn't make the first team because of prejudice voting. The whole thing was a big joke. Newspapers all around began to react with the Daily Bruin stating, it was a distinct sour taste in our mouth that we read the list of All-American selections that are now pouring out. Even the NAACP and California's governor, Ellis Patterson, spoke out about the controversy. Kenny was, however, able to participate in a highly anticipated Green Bay Packers vs. College All-Stars game, where the All-Stars suffered a 45-28 loss at Soldier Field in Chicago. The camera highlights in the world of sports. It's football's Midwestern Curtain Razor, the Chicago Tribune Charity Clash, co-starring the Green Bay Packers and the College All-Stars. Kenny scored a touchdown that day. George Hallis, the famed owner of the Bears, kept Kenny in Chicago for a few days after the game and even made an attempt to lift the ban on black players in the NFL. 
Kenny was receiving praises from players and reporters alike across the country. The nation was beginning to watch. After a brief stint with the all-black semi-pro Chicago Black Panthers, Kenny broke another major barrier when he was named coach of the freshman football team at UCLA. Kenny was the first black coach of any kind at a major school. Kenny was not enlisted in the military for World War II due to bad knees which had suffered significant damage while playing semi-pro football. Kenny year after year dominated professional football and was highly regarded as one of the best players outside of the NFL. After six hard years of playing semi-pro football, finally in 1946, the NFL's ban on black players was lifted. And on March 21st, 1946, Kenny Washington made monumental history. On that date, Kenny Washington signed with the Los Angeles Rams. A short time after signing Kenny Washington, the Rams brought on Woody Strode, Kenny's longtime teammate. Although this was one of the most monumental days in American sports history, it wasn't all pretty. The Rams were heavily pressured to bring Washington and Strode onto the team and did hardly anything to help the two men succeed. Woody Strode would even go as far to saying, integrating the NFL was one of the lowest points of my life. It was abundantly clear to see that the Rams had brought on Washington six years too late. Washington was beaten up and bruised from his six years of semi-professional football. At this state, he was no longer able to compete at a high level. Washington and Strode hardly ever saw the field in their careers as Rams. However, this does not take anything away from what they accomplished while in Los Angeles. Two years after signing his deal with the Rams in 1948, Kenny Washington received a standing ovation in front of 80,000 people playing in his last professional football game. Others like Kenny Washington, such as Jackie Robinson, are immortalized in history, enshrined in Hall of Fames, and so much more. But not only is Washington left out of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, his team even neglected to retire his jersey number. Kenny Washington was one of the most influential pioneers in American sports history. There are many other stories like Kenny's all across time, and people like Kenny Washington and Woody Strode are not given their deserved respect and credit simply because they weren't given the tools for success. We need to change this because people like Kenny Washington, who paved the way for thousands of future black athletes, should be immortalized in history. Jackie Robinson said it himself. It would be a shame if Washington were to be forgotten. I know I will never forget him. When Kenny Washington passed away in 1971, he had done so many things that had seemed unthinkable. Kenny Washington was a hero, but will always be seen in history as the forgotten pioneer.